It's time to look at the Sicilian Kalashnikov again. I've been sent a game by one of my patrons, Alex Marler, who played this game in 2012 at the St. Louis Chess Club in Missouri, the world famous St. Louis Chess Club. And this is a splendid attacking game. So let's take a look at it. E5, pushing the knight straight away and the knight goes to b5 in this case, and d6 prevents the knight coming into, into d6. a6 pushes the knight back. So this is really the, the start of the main line. Now, in the previous video, we looked at uh, one of my recommendations, in fact, my, my main line recommendation with bishop e7, and then the knight comes back into the middle, and so on, and that's the starting point of well, lots lots of different things. But in this position, instead of playing bishop b7, here Alex played b5, which looks pretty good as it threatens to win a piece with b4. And this is the old main line. And it's very daring, it's very interesting, because it usually leads to positions where black sacrifices a pawn. So b5 really forces the knight to come into d5. Well, looks pretty good there. And now black challenges that with knight e7. So that knight is still out on a limb on a3. And that's why c4 is the common move here. But as is so often the case when white plays c4 in the Kalashnikov, it weakens that d4 square. And that gives black some really nice ideas. Now here, one can take on d5 straight away. Or you can play the knight into d4. Now Alex plays the knight to d4. There we go. It's a great example of the Trojan horse, this typical theme in the Kalashnikov where you throw the knight in. Often you even give up a pawn, but it just helps to open lines for black. But this is a, a very well-known position in theory. And white has lots of moves here. Bishop d3, bishop e3. Um, taking on b5 is the main line, and, and that's got to be critical. White accepts this pawn. And in this position, black has various moves. You can play bishop e7, that's the most popular. Bishop d7 g6 and bishop g7 is possible. In practice, black has done very well from this position, usually using this nice kingside pawn majority, often that f pawn advances. In fact, the computers think that white is doing quite well here, but in practice, it's actually quite difficult for white to play. And, yeah, obviously lines get opened on the queen side as well. So black certainly has compensation for the pawn. But instead of taking here, in this game, white played knight takes knight on e7. I should say, player of the white pieces, Jim Furker. I, I don't know him, but there we go. Um, knight takes knight. Well, this really helps black because it helps in black's development. So, you know, black is just one step away from castling now. So that's helpful. And by this point, if I were white, I'd be thinking, OK, I've just got to get out alive. I'd be going bishop d3 and just evacuating. And I think white is still OK there. But instead, white took on b5. Now here, Alex castled. I think I'd have been tempted to play d5 straight away. Yup. Once again, it's the classic theme we see all the time in the Kalashnikov. Liberation Station, I call it. All aboard! Let's get on board that train and throw your pieces in, into white's position because this just opens up the lines for the black pieces here. I think it's a good move already. But Castles was played. This is also very pleasant for black, actually. And I think, again, 
White should just be thinking, okay, how do I get out alive? You've got to get castled really quickly, and after this, just castle. And I think black is a bit better here. Nice pawn structure. Uh, majority of pawns in the center. Um, but white should definitely do that. Instead, white thought, okay, I want my extra pawn. I'm going to take here. But now, Liberation Station all aboard. Here we go. And this just opens things up beautifully for black. Um, this is just a wonderful position now. White played bishop d3, hoping to get out. But watch what happens. d takes e4, bishop takes e4. And white must have been thinking, OK, well, the rook moves, I get castled. I've got an extra pawn. Black's has a black has a bit of activity, but well, I've got my extra pawn. Everything should be all right. But no, what did Black play here? Well, one one knows what's uh, that. Black has a good move here. It's not too difficult. Bishop takes a six. Wham! And that's the end of that. White's king is never going to escape the middle. White took the rook in the corner, but this is not good. Just watch black's pieces here. And not to mention that knight on d4 and the rook ready to come into the game as well. And white is utterly lost after just 15 moves. White got too greedy. So threat, queen takes pawn, so f3. Well, okay, have a little think. How would you play with black here? How are you going to pursue the attack on white's king? Cheers, folks. I think there are lots of good moves here. I mean, quite a simple way to play is to play rook d8, bring the rook into play opposite the queen. That can't be bad in itself. But the rook protects the knight. So that means black is ready to play e4, and that will open up the diagonal for the queen. I don't see any defense at all. In the game, uh, Alex played another excellent move. Bishop h4 check. Very good. I mean, the king can't, can't step to d2. That looks really terrible. But g3 was played, so this move has provoked g3 so now f3 is a terrible weakness i mean one could just play the bishop back but bishop e2 very direct i mean that's that's a beautiful move actually attacking the queen and obviously black is about to break through here as well so white had to give up the queen and of course that's absolutely fatal and the bishop hopped back to e7. So now it's just a, a question of hounding that king and making sure that, that white never finds his feet here. And that happened. e4, excellent. Continue, continuing the strategy of bringing the queen into the game. And this is very nice. Don't slow down, excellent. Just giving up the pawn, making sure that the queen is going to enter into the position somehow. Rook g1 covers g2, but bishop c5, very nice. That pawn will have to be taken at some point, and then everything opens. b3 protects the knight. Queen e4, the queen enters. Queen c2 check. Oh, this is terrible. And now, final move. f5, and here white resigned. Queen f2, mate threatened, and let's say... Well, there's, there's no defense. But let's let's try rook g2, but then queen e4, and queen takes rook, seals the deal. So congratulations, Alex Marla, on a fine smash and grab win with the Kalashnikov. I think, again, it just shows that when white plays the knight here, and it is the best continuation, white has to be really switched on, because we noticed... White has made so many knight moves. And white falls behind in development. And if you're not careful, then you can be caught out. And that's exactly what happened 
in this game the king got caught in the middle and black is way ahead in development so very nice victory and it just shows the dangers that face white sometimes in this variation um, i'll put a link to my chessable course down below uh, somewhere down there in the video description but also in the comments um, but if you prefer to look uh, look at an opening in the traditional way using a book then there you go there's the hardback book very nice very nice design i have to say they did a great job at new in chess and you can buy the book directly from new in chess or stockists where wherever you are on amazon whatever makes makes a, a very fine christmas present if i may say so there you go thanks very much for watching